This is the S23 Teardown. As per usual, there's only the SIM jack tool and the USB-C cable. Even though their latest flagship boasts USB 3.2, the included cable only supports USB 2.0. You can tell by looking at the amount of pins in the USB-C plug. So if you actually want USB 3 speeds, you'll need to pick up a separate cable as well as a charging brick. The S23 features a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And unlike previous years, there's no Xenos chip variant. First I'll heat up the back glass with a hot air gun, making sure the phone doesn't get too hot to touch so I don't damage the battery. The adhesive starts to give pretty easily. I feel like Samsung adhesive used to be stronger. There's some extra adhesive in the middle holding down the microphone. Are you sick of failed 3D prints? Tired of spending hours setting up to still end up with crummy results? Let PCBWay take care of it for you. With their high precision 3D printing services using a wide range of materials. Or maybe you need a part CNC machined, sheet metal fabrication, or injection molding services. Any part, any project, big or small, PCB Way have got you covered. Oh, and they also make PCBs. So click the link in the description and get started today. The border adhesive doesn't go underneath the camera bezel like it did on the S22, so adhesive replacement on the back glass is a lot easier. The flash window is part of the back glass now, so the rear microphone has to channel around the camera bezels.
The top speaker has a rubber seal around it to channel audio through the frame and to the earpiece. I can't find any evidence of little foam balls in this speaker, which are common in modern day smartphones. It does have this cool looking valve though, which appears to have some sort of synthetic gauze behind it. The lower loudspeaker assembly has the vibration motor at the top. This speaker also has the same valve. It's a double stacked motherboard with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor. You can see the two boards with a separator sandwiched in between. The camera setup on the S23 is almost identical to the S22. There's the 10 megapixel telephoto camera with 3 times optical zoom and optical image stabilization. Then there's the 50 megapixel main camera also with OIS. The camera is mounted with some sort of vibration dampening silicon. Then at the top we've got the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with no OIS. Then there's the 12 megapixel front facing camera which is glued into the screen and frame. The daughter board is held into the frame with three screws. It's got a red rubber gasket for waterproofing. On the USB-C assembly you also find the lower microphone and the SIM card slot. There's a rubber gasket at the bottom of the frame for the lower speaker. Samsung are notorious for cementing their batteries into the frame, but this is the first time I've actually seen a pull tab on a Samsung battery. I still feel like I'm going to damage the battery pulling it up. So I'll add some isopropyl alcohol around the sides and wait a minute. I'm not actually sure if I'm doing this right. I think this is supposed to come up. The S23 has a 39 milliamp hour battery which is a decent jump up from the 3700 in the S22. We also get our first look at the vapor chamber which runs through the middle of the frame and up underneath the motherboard. This is a decent upgrade from the cooling on the S22. So what happens if you ignore Samsung's warnings and put the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole? Well thankfully the top and bottom microphone channels take a 90 degree turn before they reach the waterproof gasket. The underscreen fingerprint sensor is hidden underneath the frame, but after initial testing it appears to be larger than its predecessors.
I'll replace the adhesive when I can get an original seal. Alright, that's it. See you next time.